All right, let's just start with a word of prayer. Father, as we open your word, as we look over some of the concepts that you share with us, please send your Holy Spirit to be among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been reading a book recently by Elder E.E. E. Cleveland, and it's entitled Come Unto Me. It's a devotional. And in this book, he tells a story. One afternoon, there was a signpost and a willow tree. And the signpost says to the willow tree, how wise I am. And the willow tree replies, is that so? And the signpost says, well, of course, don't you see? On me is written the name of a great city and the distance. I, I show people how to get to their destination. If it wasn't for me, thousands would not know where they were going. And the willow tree replied, you know, that, that may be. And true indeed, you are a public teacher. But to be honest, I see very little difference between you and myself. Because for the last 20 years, we've both been standing here, and I don't see that you've made it a step closer to the city than I have, who doesn't, I don't profess to know anything about where the city is. You know, and the point of this story is that often we can point people to the cross. We can know all the right answers and say, Jesus is this way. You need to go to Jesus. And yet we ourselves are not changed by the truth that we profess. We ourselves are no closer to, to Christ than someone who professes to know nothing of the truth. There are many good atheists out there. There are many good people. Is the truth that we profess changing our lives in a radical way? And you know, sometimes we as Christians, we're like, yes, we are Christians. We believe. <clears throat> and yes, we can pat ourselves on the back. Congratulations. We believe. But you know, even the devils, they believe. But sometimes I think that the devils are a little more advanced than we are. Because in James 2.19, it says that the devils not only believe, but they tremble. Their belief leads to a response. Does our belief in Christ lead to a response from us? Does it change our lives? Today we're going to be talking about the difference between being a signpost and a guide. We can be signposts. We can say, oh, that's wrong. You should not be listening to that music. You should not be watching those movies. You should not be playing those video games. You need to go to Jesus. You should not worry because Jesus can take your burdens. Or are we a guide? Now, in Acts chapter 16 and verses 16 through 18, we see a story of Paul. And it says, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Now it happened, this is Luke writing, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul greatly annoyed, turned and said to, said to that spirit to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Now let me ask you a question. Was what the girl saying, said, was it true? Yes. Was it good? Yes. I mean, these men are from the Most High God. How would you like it if you're at some meetings, you're preaching a series, and some totally atheist guy who says, you know what? He turns to someone beside him and says, you should really listen to these people because they do have the truth. I mean, we would be like telling that at testimony time. But what was it about this girl? What was it about what she said that made Paul annoyed? Was it what 
what she said. No, it was the spirit in which she said it. See, her life did not live up to her profession. She was probably doing it in a really annoying way, and people could see that she was, like, possessed. And she's crying out, listen to these guys. They have the spirit of the Holy God. And as she did it day after day, people started to think, you know, she must be with them because she's saying what they're saying. But she's, like, possessed. And if, and if she's with them, then they must be possessed, too. Like, what they're saying must not be credible. So people have a hard time seeing the difference between the message that we, that we preach and the lives that we live. They have a hard time separating the message from the messenger. So if our lives are not supporting the message that we preach, then people are going to think that the message that we have is not true. You know, if that's what if that's what Christianity is like, yeah, I want nothing to do with that. Over pack time, I was uh, I went out with a big booker. They're they're selling the big blue Bible story books, and we knocked on a lady's door, and she said, you know, I I don't go to church, but I'm Christian. And the girl I went out with, Valerie, she said, well, may I ask why you don't go to church? And the lady at the door said, well, you know, the people at church, they're backbiting and hypocritical. And I just, I don't want anything to do with that. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be like. So, you know, I believe in God, but I don't go to church because of that. So, you know, the people at her church were probably saying the right things. You know, go to Jesus. We must believe. That's important. But their lives were not changed by the message. And therefore, this woman stopped going to church because their profession, their lives didn't match up to that. So our lives can actually distract people from the truth and make people think that the truth is in the same category as us, as backbiting, hypocritical. They may think that's what the truth is. And that's... Okay, that's kind of what a signpost is like. You know, they stand there and they say the right things, but they're dead. They don't move. They're not going anywhere. But a guide is someone who has been to the destination. And that destination means so much to them that they say, you know what? Other people need to come to the destination too. And so a guide goes to the destination, but comes back to get other people to take with them to that destination. And you know, one of my favorite examples of a guide is Harriet Tubman. She was born in 1820 as a slave. She had some pretty amazing experiences. When she was young, her mistress threw a rock at her because she was upset, and it hit her in the forehead, and ever after, for the rest of her life, she had um, epileptic seizures where she, she would black out. She couldn't remember anything. But in spite of that, she knew that she wasn't satisfied as a slave. And so she decided to make an escape. And she did. She got to the north. She got to freedom. But freedom was so good to her. She loved it that she couldn't keep it to herself. And so over the course of, of many years, she ended up making 13 trips back to the South to rescue her family members and her friends that she wanted to experience freedom too. And some of her experiences are incredible. One time, she and a, a group were escaping, and there was some Southern masters close behind them. And there was a swamp there, and she's like, okay, we need to go into the swamp. So they, they headed into the swamp, they got up to their neck, they hid among the bulrushes there, and they heard the dogs behind them, they heard the masters coming, and they heard voices saying, hey, I think they went that way. No, I'm pretty sure they went that way. Okay, you go that way, we'll go that way. And so they split, and then everything was silent. And some of the people with her after a little bit were like, okay. And she's like, And they waited. And they waited. And they waited long. 